Powerhouse Ministries, and I'm coming to you today. I wanted to talk to you about faith. And the best thing to talk about faith is to tell you what faith is, and then also to talk about how do you build your faith. So today's message to you is faith undefeated. Amen. And I want to tell you a little bit first about how important in these days that we're living in now it is to have faith. But more so, you need to know how to build your faith. And you need to be aware of things that could happen in your life that would affect your faith. Amen. So I'm going to start with you in the first, we want to start in Ecclesiastes, not Ecclesiastes, we want to start in Romans, the 10th chapter in the 17th verse. And in Romans, the 10th chapter in the 17th verse, it says these words. So faith comes by hearing what is told and what is heard comes by the preaching of the message that comes from the lips of Christ, the Messiah himself. So the only way to truly have faith or even hope is we have to begin to hear God's word on a constant basis. When you think about anything in this life that you want to grow from, you have to feed it. You have to put energy into it. You have to put some effort in it. So if you want your faith to grow, especially in times like this, you have to look at what it is that you have to start doing today to change your outlook and your understanding about faith and how to operate in faith. Because I can tell you right now, hey, you need to have more faith. But what does that mean? What does it mean? question that will come up will be, how do I get more of it? How do I, and if I have it already, how do I make it stronger? So that's what I want to talk to you about today. Because what I realize is that whatever's strong in your life will prevail over your life. Amen. So the first point I want to bring out to you is we need to build our faith. As you saw me when we first started the show, you saw, you saw me pick up the dumbbell. The more I pick up this dumbbell, the more I do exercises with this dumbbell back and forth, it's going to grow me physically. But the problem with that is, is that if I don't come in here and I don't put in the energy to work out on this equipment that I have here at home, which I also do have a membership at the 24 hour fitness, but I also keep things at home just in case there's time, situations, or the weather would dictate for me not to be able to go to those different places. So you see the bench I have here with some of the equipment. I'll just kind of do a quick show. So I have some other equipment in, in the house that I use. These things help me to try to keep some form of physical ability. Well, we need those same things with faith. We need to build our faith. And the only way we can build our faith is to begin to look at our surroundings and put ourselves in a spiritual gym to build our faith. Amen. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is that if we know that the key to faith, according to what we read in Romans 10 and 17, it's saying that we need to hear the word. So the more we hear God's word, the word that comes through Jesus Christ and from God and the Holy Spirit, the more we hear that word, the stronger we're going to become. So what we have to do is we have to connect with people who will preach or speak into our life. Right now, I'm speaking into your life. I'm trying to input what you can build as a foundation, or if you already have a foundation, this can increase your level of faith by listening to the words that I'm saying because I'm using the words of Christ and I'm using the words of God and the Holy Spirit. So, sometimes different ministers and different people of God can give you different words that would help you in different areas where you need faith. 
Sometimes we need faith in believing God for finances, for uh, healing, for provisions, for resources. And it, and it gets deeper than that because sometimes we can have specific reason why we need a specific resource. Maybe you're from another country and you have family members and you're praying that God would make it available for you to travel and see family. Maybe you're not hoping for a job, but you're hoping for a business. Or maybe you have a business, but then you're hoping for God to increase your business or give you a big contract that you're already in position to get. There's always different opportunities to grow our faith in different areas. But the point is, you can go to different ministers and you can log on maybe to YouTube or directly to some church websites and you can get different messages of faith. But this thing I do want to warn you of, as well as you can get words of faith from some ministers, sometimes, unfortunately, you can always get words of unfaith. You can get words where people don't believe that God can do anything and everything. Those are the, the ministers I would just suggest that you want to stay away from. And the reason why is because I've seen the fruit of God. I've seen God work in my life in a mighty way. And I realize that the more you move towards your destiny, the more you move towards your purpose, there will be a greater demand for bigger resources. And you don't want to connect with someone who doesn't have the fruit of those resources and, find, and try to connect to them for faith. Because all they will do is keep you in the same place that you're in because they will make you listening to some things that they say will probably make you just give up on moving to the next level in your destiny or in your purpose. So you want to find people who have been proven, people who uh, have a steady walk with God, people who are continuously walking with God and those people who walk in faith and those people who talk about faith. Because the only way to grow into something is you have to be around people who are inputting that in you or either some people that you can gather in and grow it and learn about it. Amen. So <clears throat> just to give you an idea, a few people that I listen to, uh, what I do is I wake up in the morning and I pray for an hour. And additionally, I listen to a message. Uh, what I do is I actually kind of twist it, turn it around. Sometimes I may listen to T.D. Jakes. Sometimes I may listen to Bill Winston. Sometimes I may listen to Joe Wolstein. Sometimes I may listen to uh, Pastor Patrick at RPC Church. Uh, sometimes I actually go in the building at that church because that church is near me and I can go there. Uh, Joseph Prince. These are just uh, the ministers that I listen to. I'm not saying that you have to listen to these ministers. You may have a different array of ministers that you listen to and they're still speaking faith in you. And if that's the case, then that's good. We want those people to speak faith in you because the most important thing, like I said, and definitely in these times, and I, we would have prayed that people would already have uh, built their faith before these times come, but it's never too late to begin to work on your faith. So, since you are at the place you are right now, whether you're already built a foundation for your faith or you're building a foundation of faith, you want to begin to listen to the word of God. I say at least listen for 30 minutes to any minister that you like listening to, any minister who uh, you've got to gain some faith knowledge from. So that's what you want to do. Secondly, you don't grow faith if you don't have if your faith is not growing your faith is dying so that's scary if you go throughout the day and you don't listen to anything that increases your faith that day is a day where you have starved your faith now if you starve something guess what happens it has repercussions both spiritually and physically and you'll begin to see that day that when things come at you, you will operate more so in the physical than in the faith. And you always want to have faith. You always want to believe stuff and be able to see stuff beyond what people can see. Otherwise, what will happen is you'll just work off of what you can see in the physical 
and that will not work. It never has worked, it never will work. People who have always done something great in life, they've had vision, they've had a passion, something inside them that they could not see that drove them to do something great. And that measure of faith, what God tells us is in all of us. And because that measure of faith is in all of us, we're all capable of doing great things. The reason that most people will die without doing great things is because they will not, they will never operate on the level of faith that God has called them into. Amen? All right. So that's number two, is that if you don't grow your faith, then your faith dies. And the thing about it is, if your faith is dying, something else is growing. That's just the way life is. And the thing that's closest to death is the opposite of faith, which is fear. Fear will ensure that you do not move towards your destiny. Fear will, in, will ensure that if a thing can happen, that it will happen. Fear can only be destroyed by faith. They spelled with the first same first letter, but they have totally different destinations. So you don't want fear to be a part of your destination. Now, do you feel a little scared when you go out and do something that you haven't done before? Yeah, that happens. But the thing that you don't want to do is operate in fear. When you operate in fear, you have to push away faith. You have to push away God. Why? Because God says he did not give us fear, but he gave us power and a sound mind. So to do something the opposite of what God has done in you means that you have to get away from God to get closer to the thing that is not God. So the less faith you have, the more fear you have. The more you increase your fear, the more faith has to take a back seat to fear. So you'll notice when you operate in faith, you'll begin to see things change around your life. You'll begin to see abundance happen. You'll begin to see opportunities happen. You'll begin to see things line up in your life. You'll begin to see yourself walk in places that you never dreamed about walking in because that's where faith will take you. Fear, on the other hand, will put you in a place where it tells you that you're safe when you're really not safe. Faith, fear will um, force you into a false evidence appearing real. So what it does, it makes you think that you're in a place where you're safe where you're really not. It'll make you think that you're supposed to be somewhere because of things that happened in your past, because of things you've done, because of things your family has done, just because of your economics, because of where you were raised at, because of where you were born at. That's what fear will do. Fear will ensure that you never reach your destiny in this life. Fear will ensure that you don't have long life. Fear will include destruction to your life. So fear is the exact opposite of faith. Now, will there be times walking in faith that you don't fear the next step? Yes, you will. But that's why you're going through levels to get your faith above your fear. The higher the level, the stronger the fear will be there because fear does not want to see you walk into the next level, see you walk into your destiny, see you walk into your purpose. That's why you have to get into the spiritual gym and begin to work out your faith. You have to work out your faith. You have to just get in there. And you know what happens sometimes? Sometimes I go to the gym, and I'm going to say this happens a lot, but when I'm working out, I get past a point of pain and I don't even feel anything anymore. And now I'm doing this thing because I know I need to do it. And now I'm pushing myself beyond my limits. And when I begin to push myself beyond my limits, my limits become new limits. So where my limitations were before, 
where I could only go here, now I can go here. What is that called? Breakthrough. Now I've had a breakthrough. And our spiritual life works the same way. God wants us to get past certain levels in our life. He wants us to break through. He wants us to break through because you can't get to certain places because your faith is not there. So God cannot give you certain blessings because your faith is not on that level. Let me tell you another thing too. When you have a lot, when you have fear, you tend to make bad decisions. So let's say you needed a car. And I know this is not for everybody, but I'm just making a point. And you have faith for that car. You believe that God will give you that car some way. Now, there's multiple ways for God to give you that car. God can give you the finances to get that car. God can, you can trust God for monthly finances to get that car. Or he can give it to you all at one time. Or you can trust God that someone would just give you the car. Or the fourth way, if you don't have faith at all, you would get the car in the wrong way. You'll manipulate somebody out the car. Some people will even steal the car. But the point is, is we have multiple ways to get everything we need and desire in our life. But our reality is, is one or two ways we're going to get it, either through faith or through fear. And you get whatever you get based on your faith. God said, let it be an let it be unto you based on your faith. God does not look at things the way we look at things. If you, are, if you ask God for a car, God just looks at cars as cars. He doesn't look at a Mercedes as a car and a Toyota not as a car. Or he doesn't look at a Toyota as a car and then a Mercedes as not a car. No, if you ask God for a car and you're specific about the particular car that you ask God for, He's going to give you a car because God works in a specific way. He works off of his riches and glory. Think about it. There's nothing made on the earth that God does not supply the materials for. Man puts it together, but the materials were made by God. Amen. So faith can take you wherever it is that God, you believe God wants to take you. Now, here's the other part of that, because I know people will get that twisted, is God says he'll give you the desires of your heart. It's funny how we think that we know what we desire. We don't. We, you may think you want to marry a black person, a white person, an Indian person, Chinese. The reality is you don't even know. And what God will do is God can introduce someone in your life with, that you thought you'd never be attracted to, that you thought you'd never marry, that you thought your cultures could never connect, God will connect you with such people because he knows what desires are in your heart. The problem is we don't know the desires in our heart. So then we go after things and we chase things that we think we want or we settle for things. We settle for things. Again, we settle for things that aren't the desires of, of God's heart for our life. And those, when we do that, we know what we're doing because they cause so many problems. Remember how Abraham and Sarah, super smart people, right? They went and got something called an Ishmael, okay? Why did they get Ishmael? They got Ishmael because they did not wait for God's desire for their, for their hearts for him to come through on it, amen? So many times in our life, all of us have a lot of Isaacs going on because we don't truly walk in complete faith to wait on God's promises for our life. Amen? I hope you didn't miss. All right. So now let's move on. I have a couple other points because my time is almost up. Number three was that the faith is dying, then your fear is growing. So just remember, you either have faith or fear. There's no in between there's no middleman in this situation. Okay, number four, don't spend a lot of time talking to people who don't have faith. The worst people who can waste your time are people who don't have faith. Because these people, they look at things scientifically only. 
They look at things as physical manifestations only. And if they don't see the physical manifestation, they cannot connect with you. They cannot understand you. They don't want to hear from you. They don't want you praying over them. And even if they pray, it's all just systematic. It's just all for show. It's just all just some routine that people do. It have no purpose to it. You're wasting your time. The only thing you can do is live your life, let people see faith manifest, the faith manifestations in your life, and then let them come ask how you got what you got, how are you where you are, and why people want to hear from you, why is God putting you before kings. That's what you have to do. You have to live an example of a faith-filled life, and then what will happen is people will come into the presence, your presence, and they want to know what is it that God is doing in your life. All right, so press the time, moving on to number five. Consistent behavior of faithless people, they won't mix faith with human ability. So basically, number five is just so you'll know who are those people without faith. These are people without faith. People without faith are going to always try to bring something scientific into your conversation about the utilization of faith. So when you say, hey, I'm believing God that I'm covered by the blood of Jesus for to protect my, me and my family from the coronavirus, right? Imagine these people back in the time of Israel back in Egypt. When God sent the word to Moses to just go and plead the blood of Jesus, which was the blood of the lamb at that time, over the post of your house. These same people, if they were living around in those times, they would say, well, I don't want to doubt God and putting the blood on the post may work out. But here's some other things you can do to combat this particular disease. Now, I'm not saying you can't use common sense and wash your hands. We should have been washing our hands already, right? I'm not saying you can't use common sense and not be close to people and, you know, keep your distance and everything like that. These things are helpful. But what you have to know is that there are people who can't truly believe that God can keep you from getting this disease. There are some people who think that. And so those people are going to try to, they will shake your faith if you try to convince them of the faith that you have. If you are not going to get this coronavirus and you're a child of God, the biggest opportunity you're going to have to keep from contracting this virus is faith and faith alone. Why? Because if we add something else in to what it is that God is going to do in our life, then God cannot get the credit. God would not get the glory. That is why sometimes God does great things in the earth to let people know that he is not only alive, but he's still relevant. Amen. And that's why you have to put total faith in God. What is that total faith? That total faith means you have to have a relationship with God so you know what it is that God is guiding you to do. So if God is guiding you to, to wash your hands all the time, if God is guiding you to take a vaccine, you will know it. But you have to begin to walk in relationship with him. You have to begin to get in the spiritual gym with him so that your faith is at the place that even if the vaccination is not good for you, it won't harm you, amen? Even if coronavirus is not good for you, it will not harm you in the name of Jesus, amen? That's the faith that we have to begin to walk in. And I know my time is quickly going and I'm not gonna waste you guys time too much. So number six is this. They search for answers anywhere outside of the Bible. Just another point to those who want to mix faith with different things and tell you that they have faith. They don't. They don't have faith because they got a backup plan to God plan A. And the thing about God is he's never needed a backup plan. 
God's first plan has always worked. Amen. Number seven, they don't try to understand what God's will is in the matter before seeking God's will in the matter. Now, we know this coronavirus is happening and multiple people are saying different things that God is allowing this to happen and this is strictly just the enemy. We know that God has ultimate power and that nothing can happen unless God allows it to happen. That's it. We can twist it. We can turn it around. We can make it into whatever we want to make it into. The bottom line is nothing can happen without God's permission. God is God. God is God. Now, what we have to do is you just have to begin to go into prayer. You have to begin to ask God, God, reveal to me what are you doing in the earth? That's the question. God, what are you doing in the earth? Do not take it upon yourself to go out and try to figure things out. Or just start saying different things. You want to be in line with what God is doing at this time and in this age. If God is getting the church ready, you want to be part of the church that's getting ready. You don't want the last revival to start and you be on the very back end of that thing. You don't want God to be doing something and he's about to use children of God to do miracles, signs, and wonders, and then you're on the back end of the thing. You don't have to be that person. You, If you're a child of God, you want to sit around where the children of God are sitting around so that you can be a part of the conversation. Amen? So what we need to start doing is seeking God's face to see where God is and what God is saying in these last days. Amen? Amen. Number eight and my final point. So sorry I've taken a little longer than normal. Don't waste time asking people questions only God can answer. Mm, super, super good. Don't waste time asking people questions only God can answer. Listen, seek God's face. God has a special way of talking to us each individually. The thing about it is, it's not just about pastors and preachers and uh, priests or whoever it is that speaks into your life. It's about God wants to talk to even the smallest of his children. God can work anointing and miracles in the smallest of his children. And I don't mean small like a child. I'm meaning anybody. God can just simply use anybody. And normally that's what he does because sometimes he can't use people who so spiritually on the clouds that they can't even begin to see that you can't just jump up and start praying away this and praying away that. You have to know where God is on the subject. You have to know where God is on the matter. Because if you make a decision that's not in line with God, you're on your own. I was reading about a gentleman in Africa who went and uh, wanted to do the same thing that happened with Daniel and the lion's den. And they say he went in there and basically got ate up. The thing you got to understand about what happened with Daniel and the lion's den is that Daniel was forced to be in the lion's den. He was put in the lion's den. There will be opportunities and there will be times where yes, God wants you to go out and just do things in spite of. But you have to make sure that you got that direction from God. God does not need us to prove anything. God is still on the throne. Even though I've probably seen one or two ministers being asked on the news, that's okay. We're, the church is not only relevant, the church is still the only way to salvation. So there's no need for us to go out and prove God to anybody. God has that part covered. Just wait on him, pray from him, seek with him, and when the time is right, God is going to step in and give us direction. Amen. So. I hope this message was a good message from you. Again, this was out of Romans, the 10th chapter and the 17th verse. And the thing I just want us to remember is that God has an ability to 
definitely show up. Amen. And God wants to show up in our life. But our reality is, is that we have to give God an opportunity to show up in our life. Amen. And before we leave you, before I leave you, I, I do want to pray. I do want to pray. I want to pray for us. Uh, and I want you to just know one thing is uh, that God is, without a doubt, God is, uh, God is fighting for us. Amen. Even hearing my voice right now, they've seen you work before, Father God. God, I pray that our faith would grow in this time and in this era and this situation, Father God. I pray that we would seek you out, Father God, and that we would give everything that we have, Father God, to be connected to you. God, I know right now, Father God, that the enemy's fear has combated and has controlled people and is beginning to soar throughout the world, Father God, but we stand still. We stand strong, knowing that you're still ready and you're still able. That you still love us. That you still keep us. That you're still our strength, Father God. God, we stand on your faith, Father God. We receive your faith in its abundance daily, Father God. God, we walk according to the steps that you created for us. Prior to our birth, Father God. God bless.